There's a saying in Thailand that Buddhism is karma-ism, that that's the essential teaching, the nature of action. And it's wise to reflect for a while on what the implications of that are, and why that is the central teaching. The Buddha once said that the basic questions we face in life coming from suffering are two. One is there's a sense of bewilderment, just basically what's going on. Why is there so much suffering? And then the second one is a search. Is there somebody who knows a way out of the suffering? And it's important we keep those two questions in mind. The question, what's going on? That's important. What does it mean for things to be going on? How do things go on? And in particular, what are we contributing to the going on of things? This is why meditation focuses on the mind. Not just to get the mind in a pleasant state. You attain the pleasant state so you can understand exactly what is the mind doing? How does it normally act? How does it fashion reality? When you start seeing that, then you can begin to take apart the question of okay, finding a way out of the suffering. Again, it's a question of what you do. So the problem is what's, what's doing right now, and then the solution is finding a new way of doing things. That's why it's so important to understand the nature of action, and why it's so important also to clear away other questions that tend to get in the way. Because for a lot of people, when they come to meditation, the big questions are, who am I? Or where am I? What kind of person should I be? And the question, who am I? It's, when you think about it for a minute, you realize, where does that come from? It's, it's the question that an anesiac asks. Who am I? Where am I? It comes from forgetting. And there are actually some teachings that say the whole process of meditation is learning how to remember what you've forgotten. But you look at the early teachings, and the Buddha says that's not a, a skillful way to approach the issue. Once you start defining yourself, you say, what is it that defines us? It's our attachments, our cravings. The things that we're attached to, that's what defines. If you're attached to certain feelings, you're defined by your feelings. In other words, definition, self-definition is an activity. It's something you do. And it's all bound up in suffering. So no matter how you answer that question, you're going to get tied up in suffering. If you can find nice answers for yourself, or fluid answers for yourself, you have a fluid self. Still, that doesn't solve the issue, because there's still suffering, because you're defining yourself. So your advice is just dropping the whole issue and focus on, well, what's doing right now? What are you doing right now? You should be focusing on your breath. Reminding yourself to stay with the breath and being alert to the breath, and making an effort to be more consistent in those things. Because those qualities, if you develop the, the mindfulness, the alertness, and the effort, those turn into activities that open things up inside you. So we practice the meditation not just to get into nice mental states, but then also to Notice how we get there. Learn how to take them apart. Because especially good, stable mental states, those are the easiest things for us to, un to unravel, so that we can see what it means to act, where the intention is in the present moment, and exactly which parts of that intention make the suffering go on. Because the question of where the suffering came from in the past, that's that's not the big issue. The fact is that we continue producing it over and over and over again right now. That's the issue, and that's also where we can attack things. You can't go back and attack the past. You can't go back and change the past, but you can change what you're doing right now. This is important. As the Buddha once said, if you couldn't teach people to be more skillful, there'd be no point in trying to teach them that, if they couldn't actually become more skillful. But we can by being observant, by watching, by being mindful and alert, by making an effort, 
we can develop more and more skill in the way we act, in particular the way we manage our own minds. When people come to the meditation, they tend to bring habits they've developed in their outer activities as well. Attitudes they've picked up from the people around them, often without even realizing it. Think, well, this is just the way you have to do things. This is the way you have to think. This is the way you have to deal with it. Either give in to anger or repress it. That, for most people, those are the two options. Give in to lust or repress it. Give in to distraction or repress it. And so a lot of people, when they come to meditation, that's, they swing between these two extremes. And as in so many questions, the Buddha says, you've got a false dichotomy there. Look at other alternatives. Learn to think outside the box. Is there a way you can be aware of the anger and not give into it? Not get overcome by the, the tension or the, the pressure that it exerts on your blood vessels or on your nerves? Is there a way to be aware of lust and not give into it? Not identify yourself with it? Yet at the same time not denying that it's there. And then he gives us the tools for dealing with this. Look at the basic steps in breath meditation, being aware of the breath coming in, long, out long, in short, out short. Being aware of the whole body of the breath. Just opening up to that much helps give you a new perspective on the things going through your mind. If you try to maintain a whole body awareness, you find yourself less likely to latch on to thoughts just because they pass through the mind. Then he gives advice on how to calm bodily formations, which literally means calming the, the activity of the breath, all the other physical processes going through the body. How do you calm them without stamping them out? These are some of the basic skills we develop as we meditate. And it's important to realize meditation is that. It's a process of developing skills. So you learn how to manage your mind more skillfully. Sort out the various voices and ideas in the mind that really are not all that helpful from the ones that are helpful. And you find that once you learn how to manage your mind better, your, a lot of other things in life become a lot easier. Once you develop the proper attitude, the proper skills, these can be applied to other areas of life as well. And this is where you begin to see places where you're causing unnecessary suffering. Once you see that the suffering is unnecessary and that you're causing it, you don't have to tell yourself to let go, you just automatically let go. And that way you develop more and more skill. You find yourself causing less and less suffering, both for yourself and for the people around you. And at that point, there's no, it's no issue of well, who are you, what is your identity. You don't have to think in those terms at all. The question is, okay, what's the most skillful thing to do now? And as you're developing mindfulness, developing concentration, the mind is in a much better place to see that. As you learn to ask the proper questions, you learn to think in ways that might not have occurred to you before. So ultimately you get to the point where okay, you are no longer causing yourself suffering. And when there's no suffering, the question of who are you, who's the person who's been suffering, who's the person who's not suffering, it just doesn't matter. As a John Sawat once said, once there's ultimate happiness, who cares who's experiencing it? Because it's right there. It's what, it's what you, it's actually more than you can conceive of what you'd want, but it's there. Once that problem is done, once that question is answered, okay, the other questions just don't, don't occur to you anymore. So we're here developing skills, and one of the most important skills is learning how to ask the right questions. As you work at bringing the mind to stillness, maintaining the mind in that stillness, understanding the various levels you go through. If you learn how to ask yourself the right questions, That'll take you where you want to go.